Welcome back to the Information Security Stack with me, Daniel Gustafsson and Kim Hindart. Hoppa. Today, Kim, we are going to talk about a uh, GDPR case that uh, happened recently in Germany regarding Hannes and Maurits, uh, which is the... Uh, what do you call it? They sell clothes, don't they? That's what they do. They're pretty famous in the world. H&M, you might know that logo around the world. And they had to pay a hefty fine for a GDPR breach and we're going to talk about that and also you're going to get to uh, clear your head and get in feel better after a bit of a rant regarding how we view uh, risk assessments and cloud services. So let's start with the big news first and foremost. H&M, Hannes and Maurits, um, was fined 35 million euros in Germany, in Nuremberg in Germany just a couple of months ago uh, regarding a case where they actually had uh, self-police themselves in a sense they were the one who actually sent in the claiming and said oh crap we made a mistake and they were honest and, and open about what the mistake was and yet they were fined 35 million euros now to begin with kim what had they actually done wrong they mishandled uh, personal data that they were not um, that they did not have enough legal foundation for processing that they, they in the manner that they did so mm. they lacked a uh, legal justification for mm. uh, processing that, that data so this is a simple trick when you i can understand that this is easily done that if you have data say let's say names and addresses and email addresses that you've gathered for one purpose mm. you you might think but the data is exactly the same. The type of information is exactly the same as you have in a marketing system or in an analytic system. Mm -hmm. So why not just use the same data? Yeah, here you end up in trouble when you need to get some type of legal justification for why are you processing this data? So you can't reuse data that you might have gathered for one type of purpose. Mm -hmm. And then use it for another, unless you have stated that these are the types of purposes that we use this data for. And this, regardless if the information in itself, if you look at just the information itself, it might be a list of email addresses, it might be a list of uh, names and birth dates. Mm. That might be, uh, just be perfectly the same, but you are not allowed to reuse it however you want to. And this was what they noticed that they were reusing data from one database for another purpose that they did not have permission to do. Mm. So, yeah. And this they uh, found out themselves. They self-policed yeah. themselves. They were the mm. ones who actually went to the... Uh, well, they went to, to, to the German uh, data inspection board, essentially, right? Yeah. And they said, well, this is the mistake we've done, and here are all the things that we can prove that we have done these mistakes. And yet yeah. they were fined 35 million euros. Now, the reaction I've heard about that is, why the hell should you self-police yourself if you're getting fined 35 million euros anyway? Isn't there just a better case to shut up and get caught? Yeah, you might think that from an absolute numbers perspective, 35 million euro is a big sum compared to other types of fines that you have got seen with the GDPR. Mm. So yes, of course, 35 million euro is a big sum. Don't get me wrong. But you have to take that into perspective of the global revenue of H&M. Mm -hmm. Which That's is a 25, lot larger. Yeah. Uh, 25 billion. 25 billion euro. Mm -hmm. So 4%, this was a major breach, just so we understand, this is a major breach. So 4% of the global revenue, that's 1 billion euro, mm -hmm. that could be the max amount. So 35 million euro is very low compared to 1 billion euro, that's the maximum amount. Mm -hmm. So I mean, yes, they self-police, and of course you, you want to encourage people to self-police, but that said you sh can't really expect to get off totally free 
No, in that sense no, ever. exactly. No, th- I mean that that's that's the counter argument, I guess. Even though you do self police yourself, that doesn't get you f- out of jail, so to speak. But imagine what would happen if they were caught cheating and trying to uh, cover this up then. Then it would have been dramatically worse because then the press and media would hang them and customers would hang them and they would look a lot, lot worse in that situation. I guess that the Data Protection Authority would have a heftier fine for that one. Mm -hmm. Now we don't know since they didn't do this, since they actually did it the correct way, but I can imagine that if the Data Protection Authority got caught them trying to cover this up, the fine would have been a lot worse than 35 million euro, Mm. since the maximum potential is uh, 1 billion euro. So I would guess that you would see the upper end of that scale if you try and cheat your way through it. Yeah, I mean, it it is directly comparable to to the fact if I I make a crime, if whatever, let's say I'm speeding. And I self-police myself that I was speeding. I'm still going to get a ticket, I, w- I would assume. Uh, they might get me off the hook a little bit. Uh, in the sense that it might be less. But still, I still I still broke the law, so to speak. But in this situation, because it is a quite interesting argument. And it's a quite interesting discussion. Because now we're starting to see that GDPR actually has teeth. This was something that you and I was uh, talking about way back in the days, about 2016, 20, went to 2017, when we had a different podcast in Swedish called GDPR Podcast, <laughs> simply put. Back in, the, back in those days, we didn't actually know because the law hadn't been, had not been enforced at the specific time. But we were guesstimating if the fines would be as hefty as the law proclaimed. And we were pretty certain that they weren't going to go bananas and just give maximum claims all over the place. But we were pretty certain at the time that the fines will be a lot heftier, especially in Sweden, because we had, I mean, they were, the, it was pathetic, to be quite honest, in Sweden before. It was nothing. It was like $300, essentially, or 300 euros, I should say. Mm. And it was, I mean, it was, it was nothing. But this proves that our guesstimation in 2017 was right, and it proves that GDPR actually holds has a lot of teeth because the fines are getting more and more drastic and higher, even if you self-police. We haven't really seen the case yet where you got caught cheating and what that would end that, up being. That will be a lot more interesting. But, but And let's just... I still try to remember, uh, remind people, this is... A violation of individual's human right. Mm-hmm. This is a human right violation, nothing else. This is a human right violation. Yes. Dieselgate is a famous case. Yes. Where someone was caught cheating. It was a pretty big scandal. But to be honest, yes, it was environmental values. Okay, the environment is well worth saving. Don't get me wrong. That's important. And cheating with an environmental values, but I mean, you didn't violate individuals' free uh, human rights in that case. No. You were cheating on cars, on the value of cars. Yeah, I mean, you were killing off Earth, but I mean, in the sense yeah, of that yeah. regard, but humans would, but, but, but still, but, but humans would still drive the car. Yes. So don't drive the car that much, and you would save. So I, I mean, they were just cheating on environmental values. Yes. Because, don't get me wrong, it wasn't like it was totally out of the blue horrible for environment as well. It was a normal car. It wasn't just an exceptionally good car, mm. environmental, but they, they cheated on the values. I mean, but that was a pretty big scandal. Yes. It will be interesting to see how it, what will happen when you have a company that's caught actually cheating, caught trying to cover up stuff. Mm. Because, I mean, they are, those cases are looming. And I mean, we there are a few cases where they, you know, companies have been caught cheating. I and mean, we haven't seen the fines yet. We haven't seen the fine prints yet. So it's going to be interesting to see. But just going back to the fact that it is a law. It's not a recommendation. It's not, it's not a, it's not something that just, you know, you can shrug your, your shoulders and say, I don't care about. It is a law. You have to actually follow the law. And the, now the law proves that it has teeth. And the only thing that we can say about the H&M case is that they, it would have been a heck of a lot worse had they got been caught cheating rather than self-policing and say, we made a mistake. 
At least we think so. With and I think all right. So oh, fair enough. Okay, so. we assume it would be. I mean, mm-hmm. because I mean, it, because that would be totally counter uh, uh, counteractive to to the purpose of the case. If if if, if the fines are are similar in self policing cases, and when you get caught, I mean, then really there's no reason to self police. No, absolutely. Then you have a big problem. Like I said, don't stare too much at the total number, total amount. Yeah, it's a big total amount. But compared to their global revenue, well, no, they have a lot more in in the scale upwards. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, it was in the lower end of the scale, if you still yes. say like that. So, yeah. But, yes, so this will be uh, ec- extremely interesting, absolutely, to see you moving ahead if we get more of these cases. And it will be especially interesting to see when the first case when someone actually tried to cover up stuff mm. and was cheating. Yes. It's being caught yeah. and see what happens then. Mm-hmm. How do they react in that case? I'm going to let you loose now on the whole risk assessment point because you have a really good point regarding this. Yeah. Uh, let's uh, let's go back to the topic. US-based cloud provider, a big hyperscaler. Let's call them muffins mm. for the sake of argument. Uh, it's a hypothetical one. Let's call them muffins. Yes. Mm? A big hyperscaler and a lot of companies has invested a lot of time because they're using their office products. So you're very dependent on muffins. Mm -hmm. Muffins likes to say, but the probability that a government agency would request just your data and that it gets feet and goes away somewhere else out of their control is very, very low. And I totally agree that the probability is very low. Mm. So they like to talk about probabilities. Yes, it's very low that someone would actually get hurt by a US government requesting data. Mm. This is Cloud Act we're talking about. And Cloud Act is totally irrelevant nowadays because this is still an argument they used before Privacy Shield fell. Mm. Privacy shield has fallen. There are uh, there is no legal mechanism for transferring data to the United States. No, that is, is that the is the argument. That is the problem. Mm. So even though they were to go and remove the mass surveillance laws, and remember, this has nothing to do with the Cloud Act. Cloud Act is never mentioned in the reasoning why Privacy Shield fell. No. It was mass surveillance laws. Uh, Mostly FISA laws that actually had the biggest problem there. But if the United States were to remove them, let's say Biden wins and removes these mass surveillance laws, then you could make an argument that standard contract clauses would all of a sudden be a possibility for a legal mechanism. Absolutely. And different risk assessments. But before this happens, there are no legal ways of transferring data to the United States. So this is the problem. It's illegal. The risk assessment is not then, will I get a lot of fines because I do this illegally? No, of course not. Let's just be clear, the DPAs, the data protection authorities, are well aware that we are way, way up, up, thoroughly stuck with muffins. A lot of companies don't have an option of leaving muffins. Nope. Uh, they, they are very stuck with muffins. So, I mean... <sighs> It's not like they will go and fine you to death just because you're using muffins today. Because you're one of millions of others with the same problem. Mm -hmm. So I don't see the huge risk of being stuck with muffins. The risk you need to evaluate, the risk you need to take as a company, is that if I'm a customer to muffins and use muffins in my solution, I use muffins infrastructure for what I provide. Mm. I, in turn, have either data subjects or other customers that give me personal data that that I'm processing. I cannot take that risk assessment and say, yeah, it's legal, but the risk that it's breached, the risk that something bad happens to you, is very, very low. But it's still illegal. Mm -hmm. But I feel that 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 risk is okay. Yeah, I can do it for my own data, my own personal data, but I can just not do that for others. Mm. If I gather consent from all 
people. If I gather consent from all my data subjects that are, are being there and they say, okay, we're fine with breaking the law just a bit because we don't feel the risk is okay. It's worth it to have this type of service. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Go ahead and use muffins then. Yeah, That's at, at least issue. then you have a consent to use it. So I mean, if you have consent from grown adults, yeah. yeah, use muffins. You can question that highly, I would say, but still you wouldn't be fine that much no. if you have the consenting <laughs> information from grown adults that they actually say, I'm fine with using muffins, mm -hmm. even though I know it's illegal. Uh, I'm fine with that. But the problem is if you're a government agency, if you're a school, mm -hmm. I mean, people there, they don't have a choice. No. They have to register personal data with you. Yes. Even they're even legally required to register personal data with you. Yeah, I mean, just being born it, into a country forces yeah. you to register with, with, with local authorities. So if they use muffins, well, now we have all of a sudden a big problem. Mm. Because even though every one of them would say, I'm okay with using muffins. No, it's still not okay. If you're a government agency, if you're a public institution, if you're a school, Sorry to say, I understand that muffins is crazy secure. So it's a lot better in most circumstances than having your own on-prem, having your service in your own basement. Muffin security is top-notch, no question about it. Oh, good lord, I mean, all, I mean let, let's just be super clear. 99% of all hyperscalers, all clouds in the world, no matter where they are located, have a massively better on-prem security uh, application security, everything security, then you can build in your own basement. That is just a fact. It's it's if if it's a it's a proper hyperscaler, proper cloud, their security is top notch. We can guarantee you that. So that's not the argument. So from a security perspective, yes, you should use muffins, and, and I'm I would say even in the risk assessment from a GDPR point of view. Data breaches are the one that hurts. Yes. Please understand it. So if you don't put passwords on your database, I mean, still, it doesn't matter where in the cloud you have it. So don't do data breaches. So if muffins help you preventing data breaches, well, I could argue that it's better to use muffins until you get some help in doing it legal. But if you are a government agency, Please understand that you are required to be both legal and secure at the same time. Yes. You cannot sacrifice one for the other. It's not. It's not Sorry to say. Yeah, an either or is not okay. No, you have to be both. That's a hard truth to hear, but yes, you have to be both. So no, you cannot use muffins, even though muffins is exceptionally good at security, mm. as an argument for why you should keep on being illegal because sorry it transfers to the United States illegal now as we speak That's... today what is it it's, it's October 23rd today yeah 2020 as we stand today this might change in the future it was not true a couple of months back in July this was not true in August it became true when privacy shield fell and you are very stuck on doing data pr protection impact assessments. That's a risk uh, assessment required by GDPR. Yes. But let's do a business risk assessment first and foremost. What's your business risk if you keep on using muffins mm. and data subjects or your customers don't like being illegal? Mm. If you force your either data subjects or your customers to be illegal, that's a big risk assessment you should need to take into consideration. Nothing to do with GDPR. No. If I force others to break the law or if I make them participate in illegal activities, mm. I mean, that's a good, good risk assessment that you can end up in trouble just for the fact that you make them break the law. It doesn't matter. No, it's, 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 it's almost, almost only a PR perspective. How would you look if you got caught doing just that? Is it worth the business risk? And from a business value perspective, from a core value perspective, from an ethics perspective, do, are you fine with convincing others to break the law? Are you fine with saying, ah, the risk is very low, so let's break the law? Mm. As a company, is that what we want to have? Yeah. 
Do we want to have companies that encourage us breaking the law? Mm. There really is no grayscale or in between. It's either, it's, I mean, a law is a law, so it is either or. Either you follow it or you break it. And then uh, once Sorry again, to say, yeah, yeah, you cannot just break a law a little no. bit. No. Uh, so, so this is, but yes, uh, and this is the question. As a company, do we act Actively want to encourage law breaking. Mm -hmm. I think from a peer point, that's a imp more important risk assessment to evaluate first and foremost. So, and that's the question. And especially if you're a government agency, a public institution of some kind. Mm. Well, no, you should not encourage law breaking. Sorry to say no. And yeah, of course. Now we've been we've been dealt a hand where you know in 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 mid August, everyone using. American hyperscalers became illegal like that. So of course we understand the situation is very peculiar and it it's we're not saying it's not a situation that is tough to be in. We understand the situation. But the arguments for why it should be still be okay should not be from the perspective we want to continue to be illegal. It should be why and how can we actually solve the problem? Yes. And how do we move on? Mm. And you might even have to consider not using muffins anymore. I'm sorry to say, but that might be an option you have to consider. Well, your favorite hyperscale just might not be an option moving forward. Yeah, could be for a, at least for a substantial period of time. We, we don't know yet. Now, we had the guessing game a couple of weeks ago. I said a year, a year and a half. You said more than that. So yeah. anywhere from 18 months and beyond, I guess. Right. Yeah. But. As we speak right now, using muffins is illegal. Yes. And muffins has no relation to any existing company today, I promise. Muffins is purely hypothetical. And with that being said, if you want to uh, argue our stance in this, if you uh, agree with us, if you want to participate in the podcast and talk about your favorite subject within information security, feel free to contact us at citynetwork.eu slash podcast. There you will find all the information regarding the sessions. You can uh, answer, qu uh, ask questions, or as I mentioned, ask to be part of the podcast. For now, though, Kim, we'll close the shop for this week. Hope up. Thank you.